The Morrigan War in ancient times was often thought of as a man's domain, with fighting forces generally completely comprised of males, and gods of war being depicted as strong, mighty men. There are of course exceptions to this concept, however, and the Morrigan is one of them. Known as the Phantom Queen, the Morrigan is an entity less associated with the clash and triumph of battle, and more associated with the inevitable fate and death of those on a battlefield. In this way, she performed a role similar to that of the Valkyries in Norse mythology, but without the specific promise of a glorious afterlife. The Morrigan is a deeply mysterious figure, but this video will provide a general overview of the Great Queen. First and foremost, the Morrigan is considered to be a part of the Tuatha Dé Danann, the ancient pantheon of Irish deities, and is occasionally referred to as comprising three distinct entities that make up the Morrigan. These three goddesses were known by a number of varying names, and they each represented different aspects of the Morrigan. Different sources seem to show the Morrigan as only a single deity with different names, but regardless the domains of the Morrigan are the same either way. The Morrigan would often appear in the form of a crow, and seeing one flying overhead would often be believed to mean death was imminent, although whether the death was yours or your opponent's was open to interpretation. In this way, the Morrigan would both inspire courage in warriors, as well as fear. It is said that she would also occasionally appear in visions to certain warriors, foretelling their deaths, or also potentially appearing in battles herself. With such sway over fate, war, and death, the Morrigan was often called upon to protect those heading into battle, or asked to ensure their foes' deaths. This is only one aspect of the Morrigan, however, and in a broader view she can be seen as holding domain over all of her people's interests, including the prosperity of their land, their livestock, and their fertility. While the security of her people and the sovereignty of their king is certainly an aspect of the Morrigan, it's better to think of her as less of a war goddess and more of a protective goddess. Although, admittedly, interpretations of the Morrigan vary greatly. Some texts discuss the Morrigan's involvement with the Tuatha Dé Danann, including her mating with the Dagda, and her assistance in the battle against the Fomorians. When she arrived on the battlefield, she chanted a poem, which caused the Fomorians to scatter and be driven into the sea. After the battle, she prophesied the end of the world, in which summers would be without blossoms, men would be without valor, and sons would deceive their fathers. The Morrigan also appears in tales with the Celtic hero Cúchulainn. In one tale, Cúchulainn hears the sounds of cattle being rustled out of his territory. Upon arriving at the scene, he sees a woman with red hair and a red cloak. The woman states that the cows do not belong to him, but Cúchulainn grows angry and threatens her with his spear. Before he can attack her, however, she transforms into a black bird, sitting upon a branch nearby. Cúchulainn now realizes that she is the Morrigan, and tells her that had he known who she was, he wouldn't have threatened her. The Morrigan tells him that because he did threaten her, there will be ill tidings in his future. Although Cúchulainn claims that the Morrigan has no power over him, she tells him that she is guarding him from his death, but that is no longer the case. She goes on to say that she will be like a noose upon him, and despite Cúchulainn's continued threats for her to leave him alone, the Morrigan continued her ominous foretellings, including telling him that he will be beheaded. In the tale of the cattle raid of Cooley, the Morrigan appears to Cúchulainn multiple times in disguise, giving him another chance to mend the relationship, but Cúchulainn once again ruins the chance. These encounters with the Morrigan will be expanded upon in the full video covering the tale of the cattle raid. Finally, the Morrigan makes an appearance in the story of Cúchulainn's death, 
although it differs depending on the telling of the story. In some depictions, she appears to Cuchulain as a hag who washes his bloody armor in the river, a common vision of the Morrigan foretelling someone's death. Some state that the three hags who trick Cuchulain into eating dog meat are in fact the three goddesses that make up the Morrigan. And lastly, after Cuchulain is mortally wounded and ties himself to a standing stone, it's only once a crow lands on his shoulder that his enemies approach his body, believing that the Morrigan has confirmed his death. The Morrigan is yet another entity in Celtic mythology that, although unique and interesting, is left as a mysterious character due to lack of information. How exactly she was worshipped, what exactly her domains were, and even whether or not she comprised three goddesses or one is a subject for debate. There have been some attempts to link the Morrigan with the Arthurian figure Morgan Le Fay, but this connection is tenuous at best. While war, fate, and death are certainly principal aspects of the Morrigan, and likely what pop culture depictions will continue to focus on, perhaps it's more agreeable to see her as a goddess of protection.